Hello, BookTube. Um, I got out and about today. I had to go get some presents for my wife, who um, has been married to me for quite a while. We had an anniversary, so I, I went out and got her some things. And uh, on my route was the Listen Charity Shop, the thrift store. Um, busy, busy place, a lot of turnover, um, place I love to go. And I found books. So hardbacks are a dollar, uh, paperbacks are 75 cents, and CDs, I found a lot of music CDs. I'll do those at the second half of the video, so if you're not interested, you, I'll let you know that I'm shifting to those. Um, they're 50 cents no matter how many discs are in the set, so uh, quite, quite nice when you ride. I don't run into them all the time there, the CDs, but I always check, and today somebody got rid of a bunch of them and... Maybe they're going all digital, but I like the CDs and I like the LPs. Um, I very rarely get LPs there. I get a little beat up in the bins, so I go other places for those. But uh, anyway, I'll start with the books. And the first one here is Beowulf with that Anglo-Saxon uh, helmet there. A Penguin classic, and it's translated by David Wright. Now, I have other copies of Beowulf. I didn't have this. I have the Raffle translation. I think that was like a Signet classic. I have uh, Tolkien's translation. I have the Seamus Heaney translation. I think that's all I have. So, yeah, that's it. So now I have a fourth one, and I'll compare it. No, it's a story I love. Um... So the next one here is uh, Malfouz, and this is Miramar. This is an author that is on my to-read list. Uh, you'll notice I picked up the other one, the, uh, what was it, uh, Midak Alley the other day. Uh, this is, uh, Miramar here is translated by Fatma Musa Mahmoud, edited and revised by uh, Komos and Rodenbeck. This is uh, Anchor Books, Doubleday, New York. Um, this is an author that's been on my radar for a long time, so I'm collecting copies, and, uh, so this is my second one. I'll have to figure out, I'll get a few more before I settle in to, to read them, but, um, definitely something I want to read. And then the next one here, I think I've heard of this, but I've never read it. This is Josh R. Kemmel, Memed My Hawk. Um, it's one of those New York Review of Books. It's got a little bit of a crease. Not very minor here. Uh, New York Review of Books reprint. Thanks. Um, a Tale of High Adventure and Lyrical Celebration. Tenderness and Violence. Generosity and Ruthlessness. Whoa, I almost couldn't say that. Mammon, My Hawk is a defining achievement of one of the greatest and most beloved of living writers. Yashar Kamal. It's reissued here with a new introduction by the author on the 50th anniversary of its first publication. That's pretty amazing. Um, Mehmet is a high-spirited, kind-hearted boy, grows up in a desperately poor mountain village whose inhabitants are kept in virtual slavery by the local landlord. Determined to escape from the life of toil and humiliation to which he has been born, he flees but is caught, tortured, and nearly killed. When at last he does get away, it is a setup as a roving brigand, celebrated in song, who could be a liberator to his people, unless, like the thistles that cover the mountain stop, uh, slopes of his native region, his character has taken an irremediably harsh and unforgiven form. Sounds really good. Um, when I see these New York Review of Book reprints on a sale table, I'll at least give them a look. I don't always buy them, but that, that one caught my attention. So. And then the next one here is a classic. Um, a, lot, a lot of people really... I, I have it at my the public library where I work. Um, I don't own a copy myself, and I saw it for a buck. I said, ah, i got to have it. I, I enjoy it. And that's Eat, Shoots, and Leaves by Lynn Truss, a zero-tolerance approach to punctuation. And it's just what it sounds like. So, yeah, I had to, I had to grab that, so. And then moving right along, this is a book I've seen before. Um, 
I've never owned a copy as far as I know, and I don't own it now. This is called the Intellectual Devotional American History. They had them on different subjects. Uh, this is uh, David S. Kidder and Noah D. Oppenheim um, put this thing together. It's revive your mind, complete your education, and converse confidentially about our nation's past. So they have an entry for each day, right? You sort of like a devotional. You do it each day. Um, this when did this come out? Uh, this is two thousand seven. Think about how much has happened since then, right? So you know, like on week six, uh, Monday, day one, you'd have Benjamin Franklin, uh, and day two, Battle of Lexington and Concord. It's just a brief. A little bit. They'll give you some additional facts at the bottom. Um, so here we have Mississippi River and Moby Dick. So I, I just maybe I just put it on the bedside stand and read it, the little entry each morning. Give them something to think about. And I, th I think it's a wonderful idea. I'd have to look for some of the other ones. I, I, I never see them, so that was sort of neat. Then I uh, grabbed this uh, Folgers Shakespeare Library, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, it's not like I don't have enough copies of the play, but I like having different sets of notes and definitions and all that. Uh, and for 75 cents, I couldn't let it just sit there. So, uh, yeah, this one sort of speaks for itself. This next one's a bit odd. Um, not thrilled with the paper. It's a British publication by Allen and Unwin, the publishers. But it seems intriguing. As Stephen Winksworth is the author, and it's Room Two More Guns, the intriguing history of the personnel column of the Times. There's a picture of that. Uh, the the pages on this are just so. This is London, George Allen and Unwin. Um, when did it come out? Jacket illustration by Michael Folks. This was 1986. Yep. And look how yellow this paper got. It's terrible paper, but I thought uh, I'm I really interested in reading it. Um, the personnel column of the time is famous as tantalizing advertisements. Uh, as British as ca uh, country cricket or Oxford marmalade, it's held until 1966, pride of place on the newspaper's front page. Well, that's interesting, huh? On the front page. Uh, Morecambe and Wise, Char uh, Charles Dickens, and Jacqueline Kennedy have all advertised in it. For many, uh, Surtees, Cardinal Newman, Hardy, Queen Victoria, Cannon Doyle, Agatha Christie, even the present Queen Elizabeth, to name a few, it has been a favorite reading, a storehouse of the imagination. So it just looks like it'd be sort of fun to go through, but yeah, the paper's just terrible. And then this book, <clears throat> now, I've run into this before and added it to the public library where I work, so now I have a copy for myself. This is The Last Traverse, Tragedy and Resilient in the Winter Whites. Uh, which are right up the road here uh, on the New Hampshire side of the river and uh, the magnificent mountains, uh, Mount Washington, the presidential range and all that. It's a beautifully done book. I have not read it. it I can't keep it in the library right now. So I'm thrilled to have it for myself. Um, this is on a mountain somewhere above tree line in some of the coldest and worst winter conditions imaginable. Two men lay unconscious in the snow as explosive winds batter the nearby summits. In The Last Traverse, Tragedy and Resilience in the Winter Whites, Ty Gagne masterfully lays out the events that led up to an epic and legendary rescue attempt in severe and danger dangerous winter conditions in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. More than a cautionary tale, it's a tribute to all the volunteers and professionals who willingly put themselves in harm's way to save life. This is a must-read for anybody who hikes in the whites. I would think it's, from what I've heard, anybody who hikes, this is this is quite a book. So uh, I'm glad to have it. Um, who who put this out? TMC Books. So yeah, that was this. this I think it. Just, I don't know how long it's been out. It can't be that long. Twenty twenty. So somebody read it. And, 
pass it along. And I'm, I'm glad of it. And then this, <clears throat> many of you will be familiar with this. This is the new Lifetime Reading Plan, the Classic Guide to World Literature, Revised and Expanded, Clifton Fadiman and John S. Major. It's just what it sounds like. It's a Harper Collins. Here's some of the authors. Right, authors? Yeah. And it's a, it is what it says. It is a Lifetime Reading Plan. It's the fourth edition, Harper Collins Publishers. Um, this is uh, from when? 1997. So they moved out from just the Western canon, including more uh, women writers. They, they've updated it from when it first came out, and it is something that needs to be updated. It probably needs to be updated again, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't be uh, handy and fun to, just fun to look through. Passage in India. So... I don't know if they've done a later edition of this. I haven't seen it in a long time, but like I say, I couldn't I couldn't pass it by. Um, anybody who came up with a list like this would probably have a different one. I say that about these types of books. That doesn't mean you can't have fun with them. So I'm pretty thrilled with that. So this was the haul <clears throat> of books. Do a little Steve Donahue pyramid here. But not too bad. Um... So those of you who are only here for the books, you yeah, might want to bail right now because I'm going to show some music. I'll go through the music real quick. A lot of these albums I have not listened to this, these particular performers on. or I, I may have heard some of them before, but I, I get these and add them. I've got tons of CDs and LPs, and uh, I love having them. Um, I'll grab them and give them a try for 50 cents. How can you go wrong? Well, but a lot of these are by people I know. Uh, performers I know this one here is a, actually a one two punch so the f music for piano and orchestra Franz Liszt um, this is uh, let me see Leslie Howard and the Budapest Symphony Orchestra and these are on Hyperion so this is the first one love the, love the look. There, there might be a problem with glare on these so there's this and I'll hold it here for just a second in case anybody needs to um you know, stop the video because there's something that's in, in your wheelhouse. This is the second volume, Music for Piano and Orchestra, Franz Liszt. Um, and this, again, Hyperion, Leslie Howard and the Budapest Symphony Orchestra. Love these covers. This is, um, how many CDs in this? I think this is two, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Hyperion, which is usually pretty high quality. That's oh, three discs. It's got this little libretto type thing, or not really a libretto, but a little booklet so I'm really looking forward to hearing these these I'll play tonight so uh, not too bad let me see and I'll show the music on the second one there those of you that are interested so there's that then I picked up this uh, Schumann and St. Sons and this is uh, Neville Mariner and the Cleveland Orchestra right here. Boy, that glare is something on these. I don't think there's a way around that. We'll go through these fairly quickly because, like I say, I haven't even listened to any of them. This is Essential Classics, um, you know, the Philadelphia Orchestra, Eugene Ormandy, uh, uh, Tchaikovsky Symphony No. 4, uh, 1812 Overture, et cetera, et cetera. There we go. Then what do we have here? We have a Telarc label. Michael Murray Bach, The Great Organ at Methuen. And uh, quite a cover. Telarc's another decent label. Then we'll go right to uh, Daniel Barenboim. And this is a Berlin Philharmonic. And this is Mozart Piano Concertos. And this is a Teldeck. And then we have um, a London uh, recording, a Mozart Horn Concertos, uh, Barry Tuckwell, English Chamber Orchestra. And 
Lynn London again. Um, uh, Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto Number no. Two, Rhapsody on a Theme of Paganini. It's a standard. So this is an original remastered uh, recording, and it's Sir George Schulte and uh, Adrian Bolt. Is it? The, yeah. Right there. And then, <clears throat> uh, this is a Deutsche Grammophon, Herbert von Karajan, and this is Brahms. Um, to say what it is, uh, uh, number threes and four for the symphonies. Then, uh, Franz Liszt, uh, Rhapsody Espanol. Uh, again, a Hyperion. This was uh, Leslie Howard. Then this box set here, The Marriage of Figaro, Mozart with Sir Colin Davis. That's an RCA Victor Red Seal, three disc set with the libretto, obviously, right there. I do take these out and look at the discs. I mean, it doesn't always work. But <clears throat> then this is, um, make sure on this. This is a uh, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach Orchestral Suite, uh, Suites, uh, the Academy of Ancient Music, uh, Christopher Hogwood, who also writes, by the way, about music. Okay, so you can see. This is uh, Donizetti's Lucia di Lammermoor, um, an older uh, uh, recording from La Scala. Excuse me. Um, let me see. It has Scotto, Stefano, uh, Bastiani. Never heard this before. I mean, I've heard the opera, but I've never heard this at all. So is this uh, yes, it's, uh, the orchestra of uh, La Scala, and uh, the director is Nino Senzagno. So I have to, you know, give him a shot. Like I say, 50 cents, what are you going to do? This is the Essential Mozart. Pro Art is the label. I know nothing about this, but I do know... I mean, I know nothing about the label, but um, Sir Neville Mariner, Leonard Slatkin, and the Minnesota Orchestra. So, one of these things, I guess, that you're supposed to, probably was in a box or something like that. Give it a shot, right? And then there's another RCA Victor Red Seal, Handel's Concerto Grossi, uh, Opus 6, numbers 9 through 12, and the Guildhall String Ensemble, who I do not know. Doesn't mean I've never heard of them. I just don't don't know if I have or not. And then there's that. And then uh, this is Alicia De La Rocha, Mozart, uh, piano son uh, sonatas. Another one of these Red Seal. This is Beethoven Symphony Number no. Three, the Eroica, the Academy of Ancient Music, Christopher Hogwood again, um, and this is. Uh, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Well, I'll let you look. You see what you think. Then we have uh, J.S. Bach, the Brandenburg Concerto, uh, English Consort. Trevor Pinnock. So this is archive production. I've got a lot of archive productions on LPs and they're wonderful. Um, and I think I have a few CDs, but not a lot. <laughs> and then I love the cover of this. This is J.S. Bach, Violin Concerto in A minor, E and G minor, the Double Concerto in D minor, Itzhak Perlman, Pincus Zunkerman, and Daniel Barenboim. All looking very young. <laughs> And Beethoven Sonata, 
Emil Gilels. Um, I do not know this uh, uh, particular performer, but it'd be fun. It's Deutsche Gramophone label. Quite a nice cover art there. Then we have uh, another Christopher Hogwood, George Frederick Handel, Water Music, and the Music for the Royal Fireworks, Academy Ancient Music, Christopher Hogwood. Um, yeah, this is, somebody had a appreciation for Christopher Hogwood, and I'm all for it. Been a blast from the past here. This is RCA Victor Gold Seal. This is actually a volume 12 of what must have been a big set on um, Arturo Toscanini. This one happens to be Haydn Symphonies, number 88 and 98, number 94, Surprise. As far as I know, I don't have any of these gold, so maybe I do and I just don't remember, but I don't, I don't, I don't I can't, none come to mind. Then this is Vladimir Ashkenazi, his favorite Chopin, again, a London and it's um, got two discs. Well, a lot of these did. So, let me get my finger out of the way for you. So that, for those of you who are into that sort of thing, uh, is the music. And that's definitely a Steve pile there. And so I was pretty pleased. I spent like 20 bucks today. So not too bad. Not too bad a day. So this video has run on pretty long. So I uh, hope everyone is well. I hope you have a great weekend. Um... Thursday, I think we start on SAG along, start reading um, the first section. And I have one uh, canto to catch up on with uh, Dante's Inferno with Tom at LA Books, which I really need to do tomorrow morning. I won't get to tonight. But uh, hope everyone's well. Thank you, BookTube.